The word gao, that means nine. The word gao, that means dog. <laughs> the word gao, that means teach. My name is Anto Chan, and uh, I've been doing comedy for 14 years. You know what I really love, though? I love when people walk up to you and just guess your race. That's my favorite thing. Oh, it just who doesn't love it when someone just takes away your humanity like that? So I was just at a comedy case, club right? in the middle of my set, and I was doing a lot of, like, Asian jokes. And then at one point in the middle of it, I said, so I'm Chinese, because I had specifically had jokes that were about being Chinese. And when I said, so I'm Chinese, the audience just like laughed so hard. I didn't even say a punchline at that point. It was like, so I'm Chinese. And then the whole audience was laughing so hard. And I went to go and speak again to like, just continue my joke. Cause like, sometimes it's okay to like go over, um, you know, step, step on the laughs if you wanted to kind of get the point across, but they laughed so hard and then started an applause break from me saying, so I'm Chinese. And I looked out. And I just saw only like, I would say 90% of the audience was Caucasian audience. And so I just saw them and I felt like they were just laughing at me at that moment. And it was just such a, uh, it, it felt like I was an avatar of what I had prepared for. This moment changed my entire per perception of like what it was that I was doing on stage. And here to help you celebrate this month properly is one of our writers, Karen Chi, everybody. So if you're a white person trying to join in on the fun, I've got some do's and don'ts for you. <laughs> Number one, don't ask me where I'm really from. <laughs> because when I say I'm from a suburb of San Francisco, I can tell you're disappointed. <laughs> when I'm in California, I think because there are so many Asian Americans, especially in the Bay Area where I'm from, people are sort of like not that, you know, nobody really cares <laughs> if you're Asian because everybody is, <laughs> sort of the vibe. And then in New York, people definitely ask where I'm from, expecting to hear the name of an Asian country. When I was in high school, I became like obsessed with the idea of, you know, like comedy shows and writing comedy and doing it and things like that. And I had printed out pictures of all these people that I really admired, you know, in a very sort of high school way. Like these are people I sure, yeah. To. And then one day when I was in college and I came back home, I like was looking through these pictures I'd printed out and I realized they were all white people. Um, and it was like all white people and Mindy Kaling was like the only Asian woman I saw. <laughs> One of our writers, Karen, is 24 years old. To give you an idea of how young that is, the same year I joined the cast of SNL, Karen joined a Taekwondo class for first graders. So in the Seth Meyers writing room, are you the only um, woman of Asian background that's, that's writing? Uh, I'm the only Asian woman, yes, but there's also an Asian man who's a writer there, too. That was such a weird thing to say out loud, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> there are like a set of stereotypes that people assume when they meet me, just because I am also like a physically smaller Asian woman. I think people assume I'm going to be very uh, like sweet and like docile is a word I've heard to describe Asian women and like submissive or, you know, not particularly loud or opinionated. Um, and I don't know if I'm loud, but I'm, I'm definitely opinionated. I'm like, you know, a normal person who has thoughts. Yeah. It's ants like the insect, a toe like my foot, and Chan like my face. <laughs> Earlier on in my career, I would just exploit all of these specific stereotypes um, that were made of Asian people because we knew that it would work. We knew that the audiences were usually um, uh, white audiences um, that were really excited to hear a powerful Asian voice um, joke about stuff that they've already know the punchline of. I used to just end the jokes where the stereotypes were and that actually um, contributed to the negative way in which other people viewed uh, Asian uh, people. And that's something that I actually regret a lot. I have uh, this thing called a man bun. I don't know if anybody, uh, you're laughing at that, sir. I know a uh, man bun. But I, I can't wait till the day that one day we could just call it a bun where men could finally get rid of that man bun idea. That's just a little bit, you know, we'll evolve towards that, right? But I also have like a ridiculously like, Long, oh, okay, oh, God. Is this a Pantene commercial? Oh my God, oh, it's happening right now. Now, I think that it's changed a lot in the last like decade or so, um, where storytelling is incredibly powerful. Um, a lot of emotional state that people will bring people to and then bring them to the overcoming that challenge, um, how that's changed. The, the, even if you watch a lot of comedy specials, you notice that evolution. And so the influence on 
uh, Asian performers, I think has been that we aren't always trying to be as flashy and as big as we uh, previously were. Um, and what that's actually done is that it's made it so it's not just so centralized on uh, stereotypes and then ending the, 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 the joke at the stereotype. What we do is we actually talk about the stories that get us to the stereotype. And then we also are able to address how that stereotype affects us when we are talking about that. So that in itself, the evolution of that and the time that we've been able to give to that, I think is a huge thing that's uh, been, been such a success in the time that I've been in comedy. I know you're excited, but is Parasite winning really that big of a deal? Uh, yeah, I'm Korean. Parasite winning so many Oscars is a huge deal for a lot of reasons. First of all, do you know how powerful that movie is? It made Americans read for two hours. <laughs> Librarians can't even do that. And you guys, Parasite won four Oscars. That means last night, four separate times, people had to stop and acknowledge Koreans. The idea of being able to be completely ourselves in comedy is a hugely important part of that. That's why people always speak about um, uh, finally uh, finding your voice. That's a huge part of in comedy. And it's because the audiences have been changing. As we're sort of making more shows, I think inevitably they will all have different perspectives because they're made by different people. Um, and, you know, there's really no such thing as like the Asian American perspective because there are so many different kinds of Asian Americans and Asian people and they all have different, you know, stories to tell. And so I think as, as long as you just keep that door open and let more people tell stories sort of organically, you'll get to see a lot of different kinds of them. A lot of times people think, well, isn't just comedy and joking around like, how is that really making a big change and stuff like that? But in truth, us being able to have fun and us being able to enjoy our, our time on stage and to be able to share our stories is incredibly important, incredibly powerful, because what that does is that that sets up so that what it is that we're fighting for is our rights to be able to have joy. And joy is an incredibly uh, important part of activism, I believe.